How are y'all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob Boy. Welcome to a Hunter's Guide to ZG Loot. Alright, so I've been wanting to make this for a while. ZG Loot is unfortunately really confusing. <laughs> and to top it all off, there's going to be more than one type of player coming into ZG for loot, right? We're going to have our BWO geared mains and then either casual players or just alts that are not going to be you know, decked out in uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2. So I'm going to cover gear from both of those perspectives. Now ZG also has a lot of loot that isn't a boss drop. So let's go ahead and cover that first. Alright, so the main thing to cover there is going to be the necklace. So once you get friendly rep, you get a green necklace and then you can upgrade it as you go you know, to revered, exalted. Um, and it ends up in this Maelstrom's Wrath here. Now it's not a terrible necklace. The uh, decreases the cooldown of Feign Death by 2 seconds. I mean, that's basically worthless. <laughs> FD has a cooldown of 30 seconds. So taking it down two seconds, I mean, you're not really going to notice a difference. Uh, but the stats are not too bad. I would probably wear this over Marco Forging, but um, it's not going to replace your Onyxia Tooth Pendant or Press Doors. Um, so it's okay for uh, alt gear. And that's pretty much the same for the rest of the set. Um, the shoulders are not especially great. The bracers are actually not that great at all um you don't get any agility you just get ranged attack power so you don't even get the melee attack power and then you get four mp5 um the belt is actually fairly good though it's going to be a lot better than warpwood binding so that is one that i would recommend now to get these pieces the bracers shoulders and wrist you need these primal hikari items that can drop from any of the bosses um, but you do also need rep to even turn them in the bracers need friendly, the belt is honored, revered for uh, the shoulders. And then lastly, I want to talk about the trinket. So Renataki's Storm of Beasts is actually um, exceptionally good. Um, you see it says it instantly clears the cooldowns of aim shot, multi shot, volley, and arcane shot. So that's extremely good. I mean, you can just think about it. The, the uses there are numerous. So for AoE, it's really good. So you could multi, volley, multi, pop the trinket multi volley multi uh and that's gonna be pretty good and of course you could also use it for pvp right so aimed multi pop it aimed multi now the uh downside there is it's actually really difficult to get so to get the trinket you actually need one of these punctured voodoo dolls and they can drop from mobs i'm pretty sure but there's also going to be these things on the ground called jinx tutu piles they look like a pile of skulls um and you can get them from there the main problem is going to be these edge of madness bosses so you need to actually have an item, which is kind of a pain to get to even summon them. And when you summon actually changes. So you're going to have to get the items from all four of the Edge of Madness bosses. And as far as I can remember, they don't drop blood for each person in the raid. I think they only drop like three, four, maybe two to four or something like that. So even if you kill one of these that drops the item you need for the trinket, you're not guaranteed to get it, unfortunately. It will take some time, but it is a really good trinket. So if you can stand doing ZG that much, I really would recommend it. Renataki Storm of Beast. Um, it's probably the best of any of the trinkets, to be honest with you. It's uh, incredibly good. And then lastly, the Enchants is <laughs> really, really damn good. So 24 range attack power, 10 stamina, and 1% hit. And that can go on your head and legs. Now you only need friendly rep to get that, but you do unfortunately need... One of those punctured voodoo dolls, like for the trinkets. And then you also need this item called a Primal Hakari Idol. Now, those only drop from Bloodlord Mandicure and Jindu the Hexer. From my recollection, they are a 100% drop chance. I'm not sure why Atlas Loots is like 30%, but they drop one. So that's two for a full clear of ZG. And there's 20 people, probably going to have everybody rolling on it because they're really good. So it will take some time to get those. I would only recommend putting those on like Dragon Stalker. Crypt Stalker, meaning you're probably going to need four for the rest of the game. Um, they're, they're kind of hard to get, um, but it is a really good enchant. And then the other enchant is the Zandalar Scission of Might, which is just a flat 30 attack power to your shoulder. Yeah, that's pretty good. You do need Exalted Rep for that one. Um, you need that and then just a couple of those tokens. 
um, that are really easy to get. And that one, I mean, that's the best shoulder enchant pretty much for the rest of the game. All right, now before I go through boss by boss and break the loot down that way, uh, I want to quickly go ahead and talk about the Hakar weapons. So, Warblade of the Hakari and Fang of the Faceless. If you are already BWL geared, these are probably the main things you're coming here for, um, other than, you know, the enchants. So these are both really, really good. So if we compare these to the other one-handed weapons that you're likely to have from MC, they're very close. Um, so versus Brutality Blade, you gain a little bit of attack power, um, but you're losing uh, a decent amount of melee DPS. And versus Quart Hound Tooth, it's basically the same thing. Uh, you're losing a stem, you're gaining eight attack power or a little bit of damage loss uh, on your swings there. And then the same thing for Fang of the Faceless because yeah, it has the same stats <laughs> as Warblade of the Hakari. One's just a dagger uh, and that's not gonna make a difference for us. So they're both really, really good. So if you already have Brutality Blade and Core Hound Tooth and somebody like in your raid actually needs these, I probably wouldn't take over them. But Warblade of the Hakari is not going to be used by too many other classes. There's not a lot of reason anybody else would want that. So that one won't be too hard to get um, as a hunter. Uh, and it is really good. So just take that one. And then if you can get Fang in the Faceless for your offhand, it's good. Otherwise, um, Retality Blade and Core Hound Tooth are still going to be just fine. The difference is going to be pretty minimal. And then for Zen Rock, if you're really, really big on melee weaving, um, it's not too bad to take Zen Rock. But just stats wise, it's not going to beat out Fang of the Faceless and Warblade of the Hakari. So in, unless you're really big on the melee weaving, um, just stick with the uh, two one handers. All right, so let's go ahead and break down the rest of the loot boss by boss. Now, the first one I want to go over is the shared loot. So all five of the High Priest guys can drop any of this stuff. So anyone that says High Priest or High Priestess, they can drop this. So the main one you'd be looking at for Hunters is going to be Seal of the Gurubashi Berserker here. However, there's not much of a reason to take this over Tarnished Elven Ring. You're looking at 40 attack power versus 30 ranged attack power, but you're losing one hit. So compared to Tarnished Elven Ring, generally you'd want to stick with that unless you're just really hurting for hit which it would be strange if you made that hit up somewhere else. So generally you would stick with the Tarnished Elven Rings or uh, Don Julio's Band. Uh, if you have that, it's going to be a little bit better. And they also dropped his cape, but again, Cape of the Black Baron is going to be better off with that. Now these gloves are actually pretty good. Um, so unless you're holding on Devil Sar for the set, because you do need the hit, then these are pretty good. Um, you'll probably use these up until you get uh, Giant Stalker. All right, so I... Priestess Jeklik is actually pretty easy because she doesn't really drop any hunter gear. <laughs> so outside of just her chance to drop Primal Hakari items, uh, she doesn't drop anything for hunter. So on to High Priest of Anoxus. So he actually drops uh, some pretty interesting gear. So this Zillion Stone Axe, um, it's kind of cool. It's 44 attack power, 1 crit, 22 and, and 2.8 speed. Um, but it's not going to be as good as Barbarous Blade. Um, so you're probably better off just go ahead and grab Marvelous Blade. It's easier to get anyway. Uh, now, more interestingly, though, is this Ruined Bloodstained Hallbrick that he can drop. So if we compare that to, like, my Dragon Stalker chest, it's actually not as big of a difference as you would think. Yeah, the Dragon Stalker is better, um, but this is actually a, a really nice chest piece. You're most likely would be coming from like Ogreforged Halbrick, and yeah, Ruined uh, Bloodstained Halbrick is quite a bit better, so I would definitely say you'd be using that right up through Giant Stalker. So if you're just jumping into ZG, this is probably the first thing to look out for is going to be uh, the Ruined Bloodstained Halbrick from the Noxus. All right, and then we get to High Priestess Marley. Uh, she drops these Bloodstained Greaves, which um, are actually not that bad. Um, they're not going to beat out Giant Stalker, but most likely uh, you would have like Beast Stalkers before these. And um, their pre raid Beast doesn't actually have that many good boots. And I mean, these are just a little bit better than Giant Stalker. Um, so they'd be worth picking up. Now, more interestingly, is Band of Jin. So compared to Tarnished Elven Ring, I mean, you're gaining 8 Stam at the cost of 1 Agility. But if you see, that's actually a set. So the other one. Seal of Jin is also just a pretty nice ring, and the set's going to be 30 attack power. So these two rings together, um, they're actually rather good. I mean, you're looking at 50, 78, quite a bit of attack power. Unless you are 
already having like Kyria and Don Julio's or Master Dragon Slayer's ring. Unless you've got those, um, these are uh, a really nice option. Now her Marley's Eye Trinket is also pretty interesting. So every time you use this, you're going to get back 360 mana. Definitely not a must-have item, but uh, it is kind of cool to get that 360 mana back on a trinket. Might save you uh, some potions. All right, and that brings us to Blood Lord Manduk here, who actually drops probably the most important hunter loot uh, in the instance, that being the Swift Razashi Raptor. So just make sure you roll neat on that because it is best for hunters. But seriously, he does drop Manicure Sting, which, um, yeah, obviously not as good as Rock Delar. Yeah, it, it is going to be a little bit better than um, Carapace Spine Crossbow. So even with the much faster speed, you can see... Uh, the top end damage is still higher, and the low end damage is still not that far off, and you're getting better stats on there as well. Um, so it isn't a bad bow to use until you get your uh, Rock Delar, but obviously you want to keep Rock Delar if you're a Raid Geared Hunter. He also drops the other part of the Twin Blades of the Hakari set. Now unfortunately the set bonus is really terrible. It's plus 6 to your sword skill. So that's not really something that we're going to use as a hunter too much. And this one just has a flat 40 attack power. You're much better off getting the one crit and the 29, 20 uh, attack power of like Fang of the Faceless or Core Hound Tooth. So you will only be using uh, the main hand part of this set. And as mentioned before, he does drop one of those Primal Hakari Idols for the enchant. And then the Edge of Madness bosses aren't going to drop any uh, actual gear that we need. They're mostly... Uh, Kind of fun items like attack power versus dragon can uh plus demons of course they do drop their individual items for the trinket which um again renataki's charm of beasts is a really good trinket we would like to get that uh, as a hunter Gazranka, on the other hand um he actually drops some pretty decent gear in the form of four or's eye patch so it's not quite as good as Crown of Destruction, but it's really damn close. This is much better than like Beast Stalker Helm or Mask of the Unforgiven. And as you can see, it even stacks up really, really strong against uh, Dragon Stalker's Helm. Um, in most cases, this would sim higher than Dragon Stalker's Helm because the difference in AP isn't that high um, and you're getting a noticeable amount of crit over Dragon Stalker's Helm. Uh, so that's definitely something worth uh, picking up. All right, and then High Priest they call. So he uh, he drops the other mount. Make sure you roll neat on that. And then he drops the other ring. Uh, he drops the crit one instead of the hit one. Um, we already talked about those. It's a, it's a really nice set. Definitely worth um, picking that up if you don't have stuff like Master Dragon Slayers, Don Julio's, Curia. Now he also drops Thekal's Grasp. So this is a good time to talk about this set. Now, if you look at this set. As a hunter, using these as stat sticks, we'd just be getting the 13 stamina and one crit. Unfortunately, the offhand has a proc effect that is chance on hit for some reason, um, which is really strange because the set bonus is a proc that works with ranged or melee damage and grains ranged and melee attack power. Um, so it seems like they were thinking maybe they'll make this good for hunters and melee and then change their minds halfway through from what i've seen the proc rate is actually really really low on the set bonus so even though it does work with ranged attacks um and you can turn into a tiger and shoot your bow it's just not that good um which is really sad because yeah they are cool looking and it is really fun to turn into that tiger but yeah, it's just a novelty item all right and then uh high priest arlock the panther boy he doesn't actually drop anything for hunters um, either. He does drop the uh, panther hide sack though, which is pretty nice to grab another 18 slot back. All right, and then Jindu the hexer. So he actually drops bloodstained, co bloodstained coif, cough. Anyway, it's not quite as good as the eye patch that we went over earlier, but this is pretty good. It's much better than beast stalker helm. Um, and very comparable to Unforgiven, better than Unforgiven if you don't need to hit. So if you can't get that eye patch, it's a much lower drop rate, um, then this is uh, quite good, a lot better than Beast Stalker. It's not as good as Dragon Stalker, it doesn't hold up as well, um, but it is still uh, a fairly nice headpiece. 
Um, and then the pants are also not too bad. So you most likely would be comparing these to Leggings of Destruction from Dire Maul. And they're just just better. <laughs> I mean, they're just plain better than those. So um, if you don't have like Dragon Stalker yet, then these are definitely an upgrade over Leggings of Destruction. Although, <laughs> sadly, they have the uh, exact same uh, graphic as Leggings of Destruction. So... I hate to be the person that upgrades from Leggings of Destruction to uh, Bloodstained Leg Plate. <laughs> Alright, and then lastly, a car. So, we already talked about Fang of the Faceless, Zenrock, and Warblade of the Hakari. But he also drops Eye of Hakar here, which um, it's pretty good. I would say it's better than the Exalted Hunter Necklace, because that one has no crit on it. So it's uh, definitely better than that. It's not quite as good, in my opinion, as on XC Tooth Pendant, uh, but it is uh, a fairly good necklace. And then lastly, Gurubashi Dwarf Destroyer. So let's compare that to the bow from earlier. And yeah, I think you can see the clear winner. This gun is actually quite good. So, I mean, we can see it's not quite as good as Rock Delar, uh, but it's much closer than Mandicure Sting. The 2.8 speed is going to be quite a bit better than the 2.6. Um, and they're going to gain a little bit of ranged attack power versus Manicure Sting. It's a very solid upgrade over previous stuff like Carapace Spine Crossbow. Definitely pick that up if you're just not able to do MC. And I do briefly want to mention the Zandalarian Hero Medallion. So that comes from the Heart of Hakar, which he drops every time, kind of like the Anixia head or an Avarian head. So it's an interesting trinket. The Caster one is really good, um, but the physical damage one isn't quite as good so it starts off at 40 damage for every melee and range damage hit i've never seen any solid math on it but like a lot of unused trinkets it's probably if you don't have too many unused trinkets um it wouldn't be a terrible idea to pop that and then swap it out when you fd but from the math that i have seen um which isn't a lot to be honest um it's not especially great um, it's not going to replace like Black Hand's Breath or um, even add more damage than your Devil's Horror Eye um, from what I've seen. So it's okay, but um, not something you really, really need to go for. All right, so that about covers it for the ZG loot. Um, it's a little confusing with the rep and all the item drops that you need for stuff. Um, but yeah, there's actually a lot of good loot here. It is a really interesting raid. Um, and I like that there's stuff here even for people that are already raid geared. I'd say the main takeaways, of course, are going to be those enchants. Um, you're going to use those for pretty much the rest of the game. Um, so it's definitely worth it to get in there and farm that rep. Um, and if it, you know, you're looking to gear up your alt, there's a lot of really, really good gear in here um, for your alt hunter as well. And be sure to let me know what gear are you looking forward to most here in ZG. I'm really curious because I know for me, uh, I really want to pick up a like Fang of the Faceless. I really like the way that dagger looks. Um, and I already have a Brutality Blade, so I'd like to get uh, the dagger to go with that. So let me know what is it that you want out here most. Is it like you, you have like a Hunter Alt and you want that uh, Gubashi Dwarf Destroyer? I'd love to actually have that on a uh, Dwarf. I feel like that'd be really cool. So I hope this was able to help you guys figure out what you need to get here in ZG. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested, I have a lot more hunter stuff coming as well as other hunter videos on here i did one on arcane infused gym link in the comments check that one out if you're interested but i really appreciate y'all joining me here for this one and i will see you for the next one